Okay. 22 years ago, I did a documentary about SciShow. Okay. Mostly because I was also part of the SciShow. Uh -huh. And the documentary was really just to try, kind of show a different narrative than what was being shown on the news. Because like what was shown on the news is like, it's like night after night after night. Okay. It felt like it was attacking me as, as like a 20 year old. Okay. It's like, wait, they're, they're saying, I mean, there was a news report that was so crazy that they yeah. said uh, SciShow participants ripped the baby out of the car, held it over their heads, and was passing around the crowd. Oh. Something that just absolutely <laughs> never happened. Yeah. But it, it made people put this, this this image in their head of who we were. Okay. So right. I did a documentary. I said I wanted to show what it really looked like, at least from, from our point of view. Okay. It was, it was almost a response, but it, it ended up being like the, the de facto like like representation of a sideshow. Really? Won some awards, film festivals were spread around it. At least we can say that's like here's here's what it is and here are the challenges that I'm coming with it. The interesting part about this, this activity is this was what kind of brought me into understanding a little bit more about politics and the way the city works. Okay. The, in San Diego around the same time, they weren't having a sideshow problem, but they were having a problem with street racers. Okay. And every single weekend they were causing causing a ruckus just like we were causing out here in sideshow. Right. San Diego came together as a community, as, as a city, as law enforcement, they came with a solution which essentially was opening up their coliseum okay. for like regularly mm -hmm. safe and sanctioned street, well not street right. racing, but drag racing events. Okay. So instead of folks saying, well, we want to do this and we don't have anywhere to go, right. okay, you want to do it, now you have somewhere to go. Right. Now, since you have somewhere to go, if we catch you doing it in the street, we're going to take your stuff. Right. And yeah. we're going to take it for 30 days and we're going to put every single fine that we can possibly think onto you mm -hmm. because you have an alternative to do it somewhere else now. Right. We brought this same exact idea okay. to the city of Oakland. Hmm. This at the time, it was it was me, it was uh, Desley Brooks, okay. uh, one of my partners, Fred Fred McKay, who's uh, Fred McKay's uh, 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 senior son. Okay. Um, at the time, the police chief was Chief Ward, and then mm -hmm. there was a uh, Lieutenant Kaziki. All these people were at the table. Even Jerry Brown joined a couple of sessions. Okay. Um, all of this information. Yeah. We handed to them and said, there is a way that this can be done. Right. The city has plenty of space where it can be done. They Even do. if we did it in a small corner in the back of the Coliseum somewhere. Right. Instead of following the formula that San Diego showed worked, the city opted to just go with the penalty park instead of the alternative. Yeah. And so that's why we're here 22 years later, right. still talking about side shows in East Oakland. I've talked to other folks over the years and yeah. said, well, well, how come how come this the, the obvious solutions aren't being done? Right. I get the answer of well, there's just no political will to do it. I'm like, I heard this like maybe three or four times over the last decade. There's really? no political will to do it. There's no political will to do it. What does that mean? Yeah, to me, that means there's no political will not to do something about it. Yeah, and right. so it continues to happen in right. our neighborhoods. Yeah. It doesn't seem to okay. happen in the hills and all the other places. Right. It was moving up there now, too, because we let it get out of control. We didn't stop it, which is what happens in the city like yeah. with the homeless issue. We don't, we're don't. we not proactive at we stopping saw anything. Right. We saw it coming when everything, when the housing transition all downtown, right. they took away the single room occupancy. You know, what do you think was going to happen? Right. So, like you say, it's the political will not to do something. Because right. we know, and we have enough models and examples of what can work and what doesn't. But it does. I don't see a lot of it getting implemented at all. Of it. And that's, yeah. that's one of the things I hear that goes on in the city right now is there's these ideas, um, there's policies, there's mm -hmm. a rule and a law for everything, yeah. but it doesn't get enforced or it doesn't get implemented. Right. So these are some of the questions that I seek to aim to figure out. Like why? Why do we have something that that on paper it looks like this should work? Right stops us from doing it. Mm -hmm. the young people full of energy yeah waiting to be activated mm -hmm. nobody is showing them what to do nobody is I leading agree. them in a direction that they believe in yes people will come and they're they, you know they're dressed in suits and ties right. they don't look nothing or sound nothing like them and they're trying to tell them this is what you need to do right it's almost like saying to somebody you need to kill yourself in order to be better right you need to disassociate you from yeah. who you believe you are in order to do something different. Right. That was one of the reasons I went into tech, because mm -hmm. I didn't like the way tech looked, okay. period. 
Okay. Which so might not be the best reason. That because that was, that was part of <laughs> one of my questions. It's like, what sparked your interest? Because I know when we would come to the shop, we, we would always have conversations. It was never about technology. Never. But it, was, <laughs> <laughs> it was always about that you had this activist spirit of wanting to, for something to look different because yeah. you saw kind of what was broken in it. Yeah. And, and well, the, I should say, I was always really good at computers. Okay. When I started doing video production back in the late 90s and early 2000s, um, I ended up being like one of the most popular people, not just for my work, but because I knew how to make the equipment work. Okay. So studios used to call me all the time and say, you know, our, our, our system's down, can you fix it? Okay. And back then I'm going into, you know, folks in music studios and, and post-production studios and I'm tinkering with stuff, and by the time I left, I've just like upgraded their whole entire system. Okay. <laughs> and folks were just like, yo, this dude. Yeah. That turned into, you know, an opportunity where it was like, I like helping people. Mm. I loved it. I mean, it's, it's huge reward just feeling like, okay, here's a frustration that somebody is having, and I know how to kind of unravel that frustration. Okay. And then also kind of give them some help in, in being able to manage it themselves. You know, I don't need anybody eating out of my hand for the rest of their life. Right. So it's like, how could it? It was always a challenge. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just like, press this button, press that button. But it was like, how can I connect with you mm -hmm. and communicate with you in a way that I'm, I'm learning about you. Every time we're talking, mm -hmm. having a conversation, I'm learning about you right. and understanding how to communicate with you. Right. And now I can better assist you with, with an, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a sense, kind of in, in your own language. Yes. And then we have we, we have a signature. We have communication all of a sudden, right? right? Um, as, as folks were like, you need to be in tech, you need to be in tech, and, and big tech, big tech. I didn't want to do it because I was like, this looks like the most corny industry ever. I mean, the way that, that big tech looked to me, right. I was just like, that does not look like a fun place for me. Right. And I was like, well, let me do it myself. Okay. And then I can show our own... Mm. Like you don't have to be like somebody else yeah. to be like to, to do this. Right. You want to be a coder, a developer. You want to be a business owner, a CEO. Mm -hmm. You want to be president of the United States. Yeah. You can be it without losing yourself. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to grow in so many other ways, but that doesn't mean you have to kill who you are. Yes. I came to that shop okay. very similar like this almost every yeah. day for 12 years. Okay. Nobody once mm -hmm. ever questioned me for for my value or for my talent okay it's like it was in the action yes nobody ever said oh you, you're doing tech but you're not wearing a tie like right. nobody ever said that to me yeah. ever. and also in the 12 years that i was there on seminary in macarthur okay we never once had a problem okay. we've always had many i mean me, we've always had many arguments yes. regarding invoicing okay. pricing <laughs> deals that were being made but we right. never had any fights no robberies nobody ever stole from me yeah. nothing and in a sense we also made that that kind of like the standard for that area yeah other neighbors came in and mm -hmm. they kind of just they knew like yeah. this isn't the area where we're going to do you know where we're going to do stupid business right what i saw happening when i saw the plans that art was showing and yeah. taking us around because we lost our own vision for what our community could be. Mm -hmm. We let everybody else put this cloud over us and say, this is how it is in East Oakland. Right. They're about to show everybody something different. Yes. And this place is about to be, yeah. I can't wait. Uh, I'm already like shining uh, up my yeah, shoes. I can't yeah. wait because yes. this is going to be infectious. Uh, People are now going to see something that nobody, that nobody thought yeah. that this was a valuable area to do it. Right. I mean, when you talk about yeah. like like how development just like took off downtown, right. it had to start with one person who said, no, I believe this can work mm -hmm. over here. Yeah. No matter what everybody else says, the data shows yeah. we're looking for this.